Hi everybody, my name is Adam. Welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. So today I'm actually going to do something a little bit different as the name of this video implies. I'm actually going to do some iMac testing. Usually my videos revolve around audio, editing, mixing, recording, that kind of thing. But um, for the past several years, I've actually been doing the filming and editing of the videos for the Boyce Avenue stuff. There's a link below in the description if you're interested in seeing those. So for the most part, I'm editing on a 2015 iMac. And uh, it can get a little bit slow at times. It's a little frustrating to work with because of sometimes it just gets a little bogged down with the 4K footage. Um, we actually have a 2017 iMac here as well. And we've been looking at purchasing a new computer for uh, doing editing here in the studio and replacing that 2015. So as we were looking for new computers, it basically came down to getting a 2017 iMac Pro with an external GPU Vega 64 card or just getting an iMac Pro with a 10 core and a Vega 64 card in it. Now the iMac Pro is a couple thousand dollars more, so it uh, is it worth that extra couple thousand dollars to just get the iMac Pro. So that's what I really wanted to find out. Unfortunately, I couldn't find too many videos that really satisfied the what I was really looking for. There are some great videos out there though of different comparisons. Um, so you can find those on YouTube. There's another one which I'm gonna put a link below by Max uh, Yerve, Yerve? hope I'm pronouncing that right. He does a comparison between a 2017 iMac and an iMac Pro 8 core with the Vega 56 card in it. Uh, that was a very informative video, um, but there were some tests that I felt I wanted to have more tailored toward what I'm doing in order to really see whether or not it's gonna be beneficial uh, at the end to get the iMac Pro. So I'm gonna run tests on all three iMac Pros. Now I use uh, Final Cut Pro as my editing software. So I'm going to be using that, but I'm going to use the 2015, the 2017, and the iMac Pro. And um, I'm going to list all the specs right here so you can see what each one of these computers has in it um, as so we can compare. But I'm going to run um, some standard baseline control stuff like Geekbench, Cinebench, and Bruce X. And then I'm going to run some more tests um, that are a bit more tailored to the things that I'm doing and using. Um, notably, I want to run some tests on the NEAT noise reduction plugin, more tests on that plugin with maybe some LUTs and some more coloring, as well as how long it takes to do some transcoding and importing on each computer. And um, maybe we'll throw in something like the SliceX stuff by, by Cormel. All of these kind of take up a lot of CPU and GPU power. Now, funny enough, Apple just released a new update where they've come out with a noise reduction plugin. And I'm interested to see how well that works and runs on the, on the computers as well. Um, I haven't had a chance to really fully vet the noise reduction plugin um, compared to, say, the neat noise reduction plugin. So we'll run some tests on that as well. Um, from a quality standpoint, we'll see how well it does. And, um, and that'll, be, that'll be interesting. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So worth mentioning, I decided that the 2015 was just taking too much time running some of these tests. I decided to leave it out on quite a few of them. I did keep it in on a couple of uh, benchmarking tests just as a reference point. All right, so of course I'm gonna include some Geekbench. Uh, that is a standard for Apple computers. You can see the 2015 did make it into this round. Uh, you can see the iMac Pro kept up pretty well with the faster CPUs in the 2017 and 2015 in the single core. But of course, come multi-core, it pretty much took off. And the same with the OpenCL tests. So next is Cinebench, another pretty standard Apple computer benchmarking test. Uh, you can see here where the iMac Pro pretty much just smoked the 2015 and 2017 in the CPU. OpenGL was a little bit closer. So of course, no Final Cut test would be complete without Bruce X. Uh, you can see here the iMac Pro, 23 seconds. 2017 iMac, uh, 56 seconds, and then I was having issues with the 2015 iMac. It would basically get to 88% and just hang there. It took two minutes and 30 seconds to get there, which is why I included that. But I was starting to get frustrated with it at this point, which is when I started to abandon it. 
So for my next benchmark, it was an import and transcode of a single 4K file, which was 2.47 gigabytes at 3 minutes and 20 seconds long. Now when I import and transcode, I go into import, I leave my files in the place so I'm not copying them, and then I create optimized and proxy media, which is doing ProRes 422 and ProRes 422 proxy. Now as you can see in these benchmarks, the iMac Pro did 1 minute and 16 seconds, the 2017 iMac did 2 minutes and 16 seconds, and then the iMac 2015 wasn't too far behind the 2017 at 2 minutes and 24 seconds. So this next benchmark is called the NEAT Internal Speed Test. I think this should be a benchmark test for any Final Cut Pro test on a computer. And you get into this by going into the NEAT plugin, clicking on Preferences under Tools, go over to the Performance tab, and then click on Use CPU, GPU, and then click Optimize Settings. And the plugin will determine what it believes is the best uh, speed for you to run. And then when you're done with that, just click check speed and this will give you the speed that it will show in frames per second that it can process the video app. Now some things will interfere with this that you have running in the background so try to do this with nothing running in the background. So as you can see in this internal speed test the iMac Pro just trampled all over the 2015 and the 2017 iMac. So these numbers are in frames per second. Neat showing how many frames per second it can render. Uh, on this iMac Pro, it's saying every second it can render five frames, which is significant improvement over the 2015 and the 2017 iMac. So obviously when I saw these numbers, I was extremely happy because one of the biggest factors um, I had with the 2015 was how slow it was with, with really intensive processing. 2015 handles 4K files just fine, but when it came to certain plugins like the Neat plugin, it was just uh, so slow. So this really made me happy when I saw this. So quickly I just wanted to show you what I was going to be doing for some of these render tests. I basically just had some color board, um, some hue saturation curves, some color curves, uh, a sharpen, and then the LUT which was separated into some of the render tests, uh, and the neat noise reduction and then the apple noise reduction. Now I, these are typically some stuff that I would normally throw on my videos so I just kind of wanted to throw some light stuff on there that might be standard for what I was using. Now on this next test this is a render test only on the full 4k clip that I imported and transcoded earlier and this was just for coloring and then coloring with a LUT and this is between the 2017 and the iMac Pro. And as you can see looking at this chart, the iMac Pro was just a lot faster than the 2017 iMac when it came to rendering this 3 minute and 20 second 4K clip with coloring and coloring with the LUT. Now my next few tests are shorter, smaller clips. I just did a 20 second clip for a lot of these next few render tests and what I did was for the neat noise reduction, just to show you my settings, I went into the plugin, I just hit auto profile at the very first frame of the clip, hit auto fine tune, I would go into the noise filter settings, I would keep the quality mode normal on both of these tabs, and then I would do a little bit of edge smoothing and a little bit of sharpening on top of that, and then just hit apply. Now when it came to the Apple noise reduction plugin, it wasn't nearly as complex as the neat noise reduction plugin. There are just two settings, the amount and the sharpness. I put it on high for the amount, sharpness at very low, which I found these were a pretty decent compromise for these tests. So in this next benchmark, I did some render only tests with that 20 second 4K clip that we just saw. Now, as you can see, I did include the 2015 iMac in the very first one, which was coloring in a lot, but with no noise reduction, and it was significantly slower than the other two computers. Uh, and running it with the noise reduction plugins was just going to be too take too long. I didn't want to deal with it, uh, so I left it out of these tests. Now the very last one is with Beauty Box by Digital Anarchy. It's not a plugin I use very often, but at times on the 2015 iMac it had really called, caused me significant issues with speed um, and play, playback ability. So I did include it in here, but it really didn't make a big difference between the iMac Pro and the iMac 2017. And looking at the second test on the chart, which is the NEAT plugin, you can see that 
the iMac Pro was significantly faster than the 2017 iMac and even with the Apple noise reduction plug-in it was fairly quicker as well than the 2017 iMac and it's worth noting of course that the Apple noise reduction plug-in was faster than the Neat noise reduction plug-in which I would expect because it is Apple and it should be pretty much optimized for Final Cut Pro. Okay, so for my final benchmarking, I wanted to include a render slash export benchmark, which basically means I don't let the timeline pre-render. I'll just go right into the export function. And the reason I included this because a lot of times I will slap on, say, neat noise reduction at the final stage of a video and then um, I don't want to sit around and wait for it to render because it's going to take forever. So I'll just export it into a folder in Dropbox and then a few hours later I'll check it and I'll be able to watch it. And the 2015 would take sometimes four to six hours to render and export a video that was only three and a half to four minutes long. So it was pretty insane how long it would take. So I was interested obviously to see how well the iMac Pro did and compare that to the iMac 2017. And so as you can see on these tests that the iMac Pro really did pull ahead on every category with the 2017 iMac with exception of the very last chart with a render export of coloring and LUT with no noise reduction. And this is where the 2017 iMac actually was faster than the iMac Pro. Um, but with the noise reduction plugins on, it was significantly slower. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at the third row with the render export um, and the coloring LUT and Apple noise reduction, the 2017 iMac, for whatever reason, had some serious issues with this whole process of rendering and exporting at the same time with the Apple noise reduction plugin, which blows my mind. Obviously something is wrong. I ran this test a couple of times just to make sure that it wasn't me, but it wasn't. It was something to do with the iMac 2017 and using the plugin um, and exporting it like that. Keep in mind, this was a 20 second clip and it took 20, almost 20 minutes for that to export. So I, I don't know what's happening there. I'd assume that it's obviously a bug somewhere um, and I would suspect Apple at some point might update uh, the software and fix that but uh, I'd be interested in anybody else doing that test and see if they have the same issue with the Apple noise reduction plugin when it comes to just doing an export without pre-rendering but I probably won't be using the Apple noise reduction plugin that often anyway um, I do like the neat noise reduction plugin better from what I have seen of the Apple noise reduction plugin um, but I haven't really been able to play with it that much to really see what it's doing. Um, I may make a separate video comparing those two and trying to get the Apple Noise Reduction plugin to look as good as the Neat Noise Reduction plugin to see if that's possible. So I wish I had a little bit more time to play with the SliceX stuff and do some more tests on that. Unfortunately, this is just starting to take me, take me too much time. I've actually had this computer now for over a month, and since then, it, it's been really great to work on. I mean, it's been very, very responsive, um, definitely a lot faster than the 2015, and it, it's definitely faster than the 2017. Uh, the Just working with some of the plugins and, um, you know, the speed, at, the way the timeline runs, running, you know, uh, the multicam with 4K files, it really, it feels really, really great. Um, I didn't include the SliceX stuff in the tests, but I did use it on some videos, and it um, it was fairly responsive. It was still a little slow, uh, but it was fairly responsive, uh, and it was just at least workable. Um, whereas before, it was just almost near impossible to try to get some of that stuff to just work without wanting to kill somebody or myself. So I've also had a lot of problems with the iMac Pro. Uh, I've had a lot of interesting crashes and hangs that I normally never have with the 2017 or with the 2015, and they're all running the exact same OS and the exact same versions of plugins and Final Cut. So I'm not exactly sure with that. I'd love to see if anybody else is having issues with the iMac Pro, but it does tend to, to crash a bit more and hang a bit more, and it definitely seems like if it sleeps or 
stays on for extended periods of time that it it, it happens more often so uh, for the most part I just shut the computer down at night or if I leave it running I definitely just restart before I start doing anything because I know it's just going to save some problems um, in a few minutes anyway. So the question comes down to is it a better value to buy the iMac Pro or to get say a 2017 used with an external GPU. Uh, and, and I think until we see some results from the external GPUs, uh, I think that's hard to say. I can say that the iMac Pro is definitely a solid computer and the fact that it has the 10 cores will give it longevity in the future, especially if in a few years some better GPUs come out and the external GPUs end up working really, really well. And then you've at least got um, you know the computer where you can upgrade the video card with the external GPU in order to sustain its life cycle for longer. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the new Mac Pros come out. Hopefully Apple refreshes those this year and they're modular. Um, they'll probably be a bit more expensive and not have a monitor, but uh, that could be an interesting upgrade as well. Uh, I think the moral of the story here though is uh, for a lot of this stuff, if you can render beforehand before you export, you should render beforehand because clearly in a lot of these tests, the rendering was quicker and then exporting took no time at all. So to render export is really only useful if you don't want to wait or you can't wait for uh, to render uh, before exporting. So. Anyway, I hope this actually helped some people, um, at least was a augmentation of some of the results that you can already find online and um, help with any purchasing decisions in the future. Uh, I may do some videos on the neat noise reduction versus the Apple noise reduction in the future, and I may do some more benchmarking tests uh, with some older uh, 2012 uh, Mac Pros and against the iMac Pro as well. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you soon.